What's up, y'all? My name is Wheaties, and this season I hit a goal I've had for a long time. I finally hit Diamond for the first time ever. I made it there with some friends in the first split, but for split two, I was able to do it entirely solo queuing. And I'm pretty proud of that, especially given how short this split was. It may not be a huge accomplishment to everybody, but literally just a few months ago, I was hard stuck plat four. And I had no idea what I was doing wrong or how I was supposed to get better. So for me to finally figure that out and to be able to solo queue to Diamond, it's a big deal. And if you're struggling with your ranked grind and you're trying to level up a bit, I'd like to share a few of the things that I've learned along the way. But before we go on, don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel. And if you want to catch games like this live, you can find me on Twitch. Links in the description as well as in the pinned comment. Um, I'd love to see you there when I'm live. I'd love to chat with you. And we also play with viewers pretty often, so I'd love to catch a dub or two with you. But let's go on to the tips. So the first tip I found is learning how to play aggressive. Generally speaking, you want to be the one initiating encounters. So erring on the side of aggression is important. This Watson Caustic duo literally never stood a chance because they decided to like let us take the initiative and push them into a corner. Now I'm not saying you can't play legends like Watson and Caustic. You certainly can, and they're very prevalent, especially in pro play. But you need to use them more of to take space, not just to bunker down. Fact is that you should take every fight that you have a good chance of winning, as long as you're not making it easy for you to get thirded. The current rank system is really about minimizing the RP you lose on bad drops and setting yourself up to just absolutely snowball a game every now and then. Moving on to our next tip, we gotta play the edge of our fights. You're gonna have to third party fights often, because it's free KP. But if you're just running in and like getting right in somebody's face, you're making it possible for both teams to turn on you. Remember, just because two teams should keep their attention on each other doesn't mean they necessarily will. People always play the way that water flows. They will follow the path of least resistance. <laughs> you don't want to be that path. Don't be that guy that's easier to shoot. Play the edge of a fight, play your cover, and be just a little too difficult for people to worry about. And only full commit when you're sure you have an advantage. Now this third tip might sound dumb, but bear with me. You've got to minimize your obvious mistakes. Once you've got the core mechanics down, fighting, rotations, looting, hot dropping, etc., the only real difference between you and the best players is how often you make mistakes. Now, at this point, I've been able to play against the best players in this game. I've matched consistently against Predators in both Arenas and Battle Royale, and I can remember a couple times when I played actual pros that I recognized and went toe to toe with them. Anybody at my level can do that every now and then. It's not special for a diamond player to get a kill on a pro every now and then. The reason those guys are pros and preds and I'm not is because they make less mistakes than me. They get caught out less often. They stick with their team. They make smart rotations more consistently. I still have a habit of dropping on the same weapon as three other people and expecting to get out of there alive. At this level, it's really not about aim. That just takes practice and time. This is about how often you do the right things at the right time and you don't do dumb things. Things that you just know are dumb. And if you look at your gameplay, I'm sure you can see a lot of decisions that you're like, why did, why did I do that? Why did I drop on a full three stack? What did I expect to happen? So take a look at your gameplay, an honest look, and ask yourself, was that a bad idea? And what should I have done differently? The reason I bring this up is because around this clip, this end game is full of obvious mistakes. Our Bloodhound got caught out, the Wraith on the enemy team tried to kidnap that they really shouldn't have gone for, I did an embarrassingly bad job of shield swapping and trying to find a bat, totally biffed that bracelet, the Gibby should have full stuck the res, and despite all those mistakes I made, I won anyways. The other team really should have won that easily, they had height. They had sight on us as we were coming up. We just made one fewer mistake than them. For our fourth tip, you've got to play for your teammates and you've got to be willing to change what you're doing for them. I wanted to take longer to loot here, but I can see that the Wraith is in a fight that she probably can't get out of, so I'm going to get what I need and get in there with her. Playing for your teammates can be risky. I know we've all been let down by bad randoms, but it's still a team game. And you're only going to get to the highest ranks by playing as a team. This is why so many people will recommend that you three stack. Even if you're three stacking with players that aren't quite as good as you, it's still often better than playing with randoms because you know how to play with them as a team. And I want to point out, by the way, how I kept fighting with like 50 HP here. Sometimes you sometimes you want to do that. Most most scenarios you want to go back and heal and reset and then get back into the fight. But in this case, my teammates had way more health than me. I knew that if I dropped out of the fight, though, that I would be leaving them in a fair 2v2. Now, that's a fair fight, and fair fights are for suckers. So I decide I'm going to swing in on low HP, knowing that the worst case scenario, I'm taking bullets that would have otherwise gone into my teammates, ended up working out better than that in the end. Now, for our fifth tip, we're going to look at the other side of the coin of this playing for your teammates. You've still got to play for your life. 
Playing for your teammates can't always come at the expense of your life. There are some times you're going to want to do that. There's some times where you hard swing and you really expose yourself to the other team and maybe you're on controller and you just one clip somebody that's a threat and there's say you're swinging two people those two people are watching you you one clip one of them the other one's still looking at you while your team comes after you and cleans up sometimes you want to do that very rarely though main priority that every player should have is staying alive you can't do much if you're down even if you're up and not shooting, you're still a present threat in the mind of the other team, and you still have a chance to help. So, play your life. Moving on to tip number six, you've got to be patient. If a fight doesn't look good, or there's a large chance you're going to get third-partied by somebody that you already know is nearby, then just wait for an opportunity. Now, I'm not saying that you should always be like, oh my god, there's a third party around the corner, I can't fight any fights ever. No, don't do that, no. But if you know that somebody's nearby, then don't just run in guns a-blazing and just think that everything's going to be fine. Don't make yourself an easy third party. You can see in this endgame here that we end up getting a bunch of free knocks just because a squad tried to force a really bad fight. I cut out a bunch of gameplay that I didn't think was very interesting, but we had literally been waiting in this building for probably five minutes at this point because we'd gotten unlucky and been sandwiched a few times prior to this. I expected to lose in like seventh place, to be honest, or maybe make it to fourth at best. I did not expect to win, but because these other squads just couldn't wait a couple minutes for us to be forced out by ring, we ended up winning the game. This was a bit of a boring way to get to diamond, but not every game can be this high octane joyride. If you're serious about getting better, you should take every fight you can get. But if you're serious about gaining RP, sometimes you just need to sit and wait a bit. Now for our seventh and final tip, the most important tip in this entire video, Turn your mic on. Seriously, dude, you've got to talk. <laughs> Assuming you're not already, of course. You can get to plat at least without calming. You can solo queue to plat without turning your mic on at once. But after that, it really starts getting hard. You've got to communicate and you've got to make sure you're on the same page as your teammates. Things will only get you so far. Sometimes they can be ambiguous in more complicated situations. And you don't want to leave your teammates thinking, what does he mean? Like, what is, he, what is he telling me to do? Is he telling me to push? Is he telling me there's just an enemy there and we should avoid it? Despite the advantages of the ping system, it's still best and still fastest for you to be on the mic. And as far as communication goes, you mainly just need to tell them what you're doing. I'm pushing, I'm healing, I cracked one, I naded that. Like, keep it short and simple. Just try to give them information they can process quickly that will help them make spur of the moment decisions. Keep it simple. Well, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. If you did and you'd like to see more content like this, then let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to follow us on Twitch to catch us live, and I'll see y'all in the comments.